How many SKUs should your brand have? My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guide. And in this video, I'm going to talk about new, old products, new customers, old customers. I'm going to draw a diagram and show you. So let's dive straight in. So first thing I'm going to do, just open up Paint Shop here. Super basic thing. And I, I drew a little plus sign. Okay, so in the top left quadrant, we're going to do N N new product, new customer. These are launching brand new products and selling it to new customers who have never purchased from you before. Okay, on the next quad, we're gonna do new products to old customers. So this is when you might sell something that you just launched, but you're gonna target your old customers. Then we have old product to old customers and old product to new customers. Okay, so NN, NO, OO, ON. Okay, so here's our four quads that we're gonna be breaking down. One of the number one challenges that I see big brands go through is that they eventually get uh, too big of a catalog. And to demonstrate this, let's take a brief look at Zule Kitchen, which is the number one bestseller in milk frothers. Okay, so think about how many color variations there are here on screen, right? So we've got 10, three rows of 10, and another five on top of that. So 35 variations. And then there's the style mixes, which adds another complexity. Do you see how some of these grayed out? Which adds a little confusion to the consumer because now they can't get the right color in all three of these options. But essentially, <clears throat> there is almost 75-ish variations of the same type of product. Whereas not every one of these variations is producing. This one does 400 a month. We could click on each of these colors and find a variety. 600 on that one. Uh, here a few, there a few, 500 on that one. And some of you would just be happy with 500 of any product sales, and I realize that. But the fact of the matter is, is that they are pushing multiple products. That one's only got 200 and they have a strategy in mind, and it's a good strategy, right? They're, they're basically pushing everybody to the listing with their one best seller at a $10 price point, and then upselling these other colors at 16 to $20 a pop. It's a great strategy, quite frankly. But for most sellers, what ends up happening is they launch their one to three good colors, black, red, blue, whatever, basics, and then they're like, hey, how can we increase our sales further? And somebody on the team eventually says, inevitably, why don't we launch five more colors? They launch the five more colors and sales go down. Then you do the postmortem and you're like, how is that possible? We launched more colors. Why wouldn't sales go up? Well, it's because you cannibalized your listing to the point where your best seller was doing less. When the best seller started doing less, you ended up deranking because the variations are ranked independently of each other. And so if this one was normally selling 1,000 units, but then you launched five more variations, and now it only sells 800 units because the other variations are getting the sales, now your SEO rankings go down 20%, which then spiral and then decrease the sales even further. Then the next month, you're selling 700 units, and it just death spirals from there. It is much superior, in my expert Amazon selling opinion, to launch an entirely brand new product that you're not doing today versus selling three extra colors. And, and I think this mistake is made all the time. So now let's go back to our chart over here and, and kind of break this down. So if, if today, and by the way, if you didn't know this, inside of Seller Central, you can look at your breakdown of new to file customers. So if you go over to Campaign Manager, and then you click on one of these drop downs here, you can switch the metric. So I'm gonna switch this to percentage of orders new to brand, NTB. And what you'll see here is out of the $16,000 in sales during this time period, 73% of them were new to the brand. That means they've never purchased from your brand before. So when we look at this chart here, I believe, that Amazon sellers over index on trying to do certain quads over others. So if we, if we write, I'm gonna switch my color over to green here, and I'm gonna put three money symbols here because 
it is the most expensive thing that you can do is to sell NN, new products to new customers. It takes more time and money to launch a new product and it takes more money to acquire a new customer. And so this quadrant is over indexed by Amazon sellers. They're spending more money to acquire new customers. And when we look at it and, and go through here, the old product to old customers, poorly drawn there, but you get the idea. I'll, I'll redraw it because I'm so, so depressed by how badly I drew that one. I, the eraser doesn't erase the whole thing. Nice. So <clears throat> the ability to sell an old product to an old customer is significantly cheaper. Why? Because they've already bought from your brand. They know exactly what they're expecting and they, <clears throat> they are already a customer. So it's easy to acquire. This example is often easier to obtain uh, on a Shopify website because you have their email address as well. Uh, a little bit different on Amazon. But the point is, it's still the cheapest uh, to acquire is old to old. And I probably should have inversed these. Uh, I should have put old, old on the bottom right. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to fix this up. All right. I, I've moved old, old to the bottom right because I wanted to kitty corner it from new to new because it's the complete opposite. Okay. So selling an old product to a new customer is going to have two money symbols. And selling a new product to an old customer is going to have two money symbols. So right here is the cost to acquire or make the sale. So three money symbols, new to new, two money symbols for new to old, two money symbols for old to new, and one money symbol to old to old. And this is to symbolize or signify the cost to make the sale. So if, if you are going to get really creative and you went and analyzed your percentage of orders new to brand, you would find, in my experience, that the cost of the PPC is more expensive and higher ACoS when the brand is new to the customer and would be lower when it's not new to the customer. So even though you can't target uh, as easily older customers, there are some ways you can do it. You can run uh, a coupon uh, segment. Th this is kind of new in the last six months. So this will be new information for some of you sellers. But in case you didn't know, you can set up coupons that are specific to old customers or new customers. And, and so that's available in the coupon section. Uh, but it's, you know, in terms of the bulk of your PPC spend, it's, it's generally keyword focused. And, and so it's harder to acquire that new customer uh, to your brand, and you'll see a percentage of new to brand. So first of all, most of you are not tracking N to B, uh, new to brand, and you should at least know what your general percentage is. So go over to campaign manager, update the attribute there, and, and just look at your percentage of orders new to brand, just so you know what your stat is. And then you can kind of benchmark that and decide what's a good number. There is no such thing as a bad number, but you may decide like, hey, maybe we're a little static and, and the percentage of new to brand is only 10%. And you might say to yourself, wow, we are over indexing on old. And you may choose to make a goal to go acquire new customers. And if you're not acquiring new customers with your old products, then you got to go back to the top left quad, which is new to new. And this might be an articulated reason why you have to go launch an entirely brand new product. Uh, but, but my point is, is that if you've got a catalog of 10 SKUs and you could spend more time acquiring at a less cost and sell old product to old customers, this is the first quad that I think you should look at. And it's, and it's under indexed by Amazon sellers, by e-commerce brands all the time. And, and so if you buy my argument that it's cheaper to sell old product to old customers, then how do you go about doing this? Well, you could set up a coupon inside of Amazon that is just for old customers on an old product. That would be one way you could do this. If you have an email list, you can send out an email to some of your consumers and say, hey, we're running a sale on this old product. Or, hey, did you know there are three features about this old product? And you're, you're obviously not going to call it the old product, but I'm referencing it on the screen here as the old product. And, and did you know this 
product has three old features uh, that are really highly recommended or the testimonials of our customers really love this two things about this particular product and you can leverage it that way. But one thing that I think a lot of sellers do value is subscribe and save. And this is something that allows you to sell an old product to an old customer by simply enabling funding. So sometimes when I bring this up to sellers, they have a really hard time believing funding subscribe and save for an extra 10% is worthwhile. But if you look at your ACOS, so if we go back over to my campaign structure here, and we look at our general ACOS trend, and the ACOS is 52%, it costs me $52 for every 100 I generate to acquire a customer. And then if you calculate, okay, if I was doing subscribe and save, it would only cost me $10 to acquire that same $100. In other words, 20% uh, of the cost to acquire a new customer via PPC versus getting them to enroll in subscribe and save. So some of you are having a big aha moment right now because you're like, oh my gosh, why haven't I funded subscribe and save? So you need to rush over to the subscribe and save portal, which is very difficult to locate in the in the catalog dropdown. I actually had to get here from a help file, <laughs> but you can see... Uh, uh, S and S at the top here on the URL. Uh, and here is the URL if you want to copy and paste this in. Sellercentral.amazon.com slash S and S stands for subscribe and save slash manage. Because I can't freaking find it in the drop downs. Maybe one of you guys can put, point it out in the comments for me. Uh, but it took me like 10 minutes off screen to go find this, surprisingly. All right. So in here, uh, you can have product seller funded at a particular uh, discount. So you can go zero, which is the default, five or 10%. I am recommending that all of you, regardless of your category, consider 10% extra funding. And again, that's because 52% ACOS over here, 10% ACOS by subscribe and save, which then again proves it costs less to acquire an old customer with an old product. So the moral of this story, don't launch too many SKUs and enroll an extra 10% on subscribe and save. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. I manage $1.2 billion in annual revenue on Amazon. Basically one out of every 200 transactions that goes through Amazon. If you need help, go to myamazonguy.com and contact us today. We do full service management, PPC, SEO, CTR, anything that generates traffic anything that improves conversion rate in the form of design, catalog troubleshooting, and merchandising. Watch these next videos here for extra learning and keep it up. You got this.